Uh, this is uh, Roger Maris. Um, broke the, uh, some people consider him the true home run uh, king still in the age of steroids. Um, uh, he, uh, uh, it, certainly I always think of, uh, I'm 35 years old, so I grew up in the age of, I'm a Cardinals fan, so I grew up in the age of Ozzie Smith and Willie McGee and speed baseball. And, but certainly like my, for my father's generation, maybe even a little bit before, Rod, the, uh, I always think of Billy Crystal's movie 61, which really kind of painted the Roger Maris, uh, Mickey Mantle home run chase as not just, not just like a, a thing between two men, but this actual like almost like epic cultural event for a whole generation. Um, that was, the, he had a 61st homer on October 1st, 1961. Yankee Stadium, uh, which held, the, the, this is the old Yankee Stadium, held 58,000 people. It, there were about 23,000 there. Uh, I remember looking that up and finding that kind of amazing, seeing pictures of that, and seeing that this, there was actually really only kind of one area of the stadium filled, and it was right field because they all wanted to get the ball and sell it, which, of course, they all blamed my generation for being the soulless people that did that, but to, uh, desire for money tends to be spanned across generations. Um, and I started looking into that a little bit because this is my visual illustration of Yankee Stadium having 23,000 people point at that. I guess, it, yeah. Oh, there was also a crane that day. Okay, it's not from the same day, but uh, I couldn't find an actual photo of the thing. But uh, I started looking around and looking at a lot of some of the stats from 1961, which I think people generally consider the golden age around the time. Wrigley Field, which if you, even as bad as the Cubs are, as a Cardinal fan, I'm not sad to say that fact. Um, uh, they, it's still, like, even, it's a little easier to get a ticket this year, but it certainly has been one of the most difficult tickets to get in over the last 10 years. Wrigley Field, which has a, a, essentially, maybe has a few more seats now, but essentially it's the same stadium, averaged about 8,303 fans a game in 1961, which is, like, that's, like, I, I think that would fill Huff, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sure. Like, that's, and, and like, I, there is this kind of notion that this was the heyday of, of baseball, and it's just not true at all. In fact, if you look around baseball now, uh, attendance is uh, up until I think maybe last year because of a general economic decline, it's been up consistently. But uh, attendance is actually almost beside the point. One thing that baseball has done very, very well and has appreciated in a way that maybe even other sports haven't is in a lot of ways their C-SPAN that charges <laughs> in that uh, they put everything online. They have, uh, they, in a lot of ways, they trusted their customers. You know, like you look at the NFL, like if you don't have, I, I, live, in, I live in Brooklyn, I ha cannot get DirecTV, it's just physically incapable of getting it, so I can't watch my, my beloved Arizona Cardinals. Uh, but I don't know why I ever want to watch them anyway. <clears throat> but I can't, well, I'm physically unable to do that. The NFL makes that difficult for me to do that because they are so much in, they, they're about restricting their content, getting big television deals from the networks and so, <clears throat> excuse me, and DirecTV and so on. Baseball, while certainly having some television deals of its own, is actually notorious for putting everything online. <clears throat> it has made baseball one of the mo it has made the amount of money this has made for baseball. In 2000, the year 2000, MLB Advanced Media was, was created. At the time, MLB.com was actually owned by a Philadelphia law firm that was like Mahler, L L Lincecum, and Simpson. You know, it was like, or, oh, that, whatever the B is, Bob. Um, and it was, it was, it was, you know, it was a Philadelphia law firm. Like the idea, that, like they didn't even own MLB.com in 2000. So they, they eventually bought MLB.com. And they put, and what they did was, uh, well, I'll get to that in a moment. They, what they did was they made, they put a yeah, $75 million investment total from all the teams in baseball, which if you break that out is about the price of a slap hitting utility infielder on each team, maybe. And like the, the amount of investment actually required from these guys was very, very little. What they did, they hired a man named Bob Bowman, who is actually now considered when Bud Selig is to ever retire, and that's of course never happening. But if he were to retire, uh, Bob Bowman is considered the leading candidate to replace him. But at the time, he was like, he, he had worked for, uh, he worked briefly for MVP.com, which is this horrible uh, uh, dead.com that John out like a bunch, they got a bunch of, it was like the pets.com of sports uh, <laughs> during the dot-com boom. Like, he had not had necessarily a, he was a smart guy, but he not necessarily had the most distinguished career. But what he saw was he saw that there was an opening for baseball. There was an opening, baseball, the, the way baseball itself was constructed, 
you literally could not say, if you had the biggest baseball fan in the world who wanted to watch everything, he literally couldn't get to all of it. Like you could, there's, it's limitless. You could, a hardcore baseball fan could go to MLB.com and spend hours and not even come close to, be, to, to really being a part of it. He recognized that quickly and also recognized that because of baseball and because he, he had the idea, should we stream live games? Is that hard? Can we do that? The first year I think he did, they did like 30 games like in 2000. But what they did was they started buying up server space. They started buying up video uh, as much as they could. And to the point to where now they brought up so much space that actually other companies, including like, com com uh, like people that, that, like CBS for example, the, they actually streamed instantly tournament by using MLB servers. They actually, a lot of times you'll see on Yahoo, if they like do like a live concert, they use MLB servers. They were so ahead of the game on that, uh, that they bought up and bought up and bought up. So why, so why is this relevant now? Because let's say they have, let's say thanks to, damn it, damn, ah, I keep forgetting it's there. Uh, this is the MLB app, the MLB at that app. Uh, this is on the iPad, which I don't have an iPad, but I hear they're nifty. Um, I, ha I have an iPhone, that's like enough. I can, um, but uh, this, what they've done is the idea I actually was tinkering for a while, I'm not very good at Photoshop, but I was tinkering, tinkering of trying to figure out what this would look like during the Roger Maris game. I, just, I thought it would be kind of fun to put like a little Roger Maris guy, but uh, I don't know how to do that. So, but the idea is like this is, so, this is just the bare minimum of what you can do with a, with a particular game. This is the MLB app. It costs, I believe, $16 a year plus, the, you, you, you can, but you can also stream the games live on here. You can listen, you can li li listen there as well, and you have essentially no boundaries on it. I can, I can put my fantasy stats up there. I can do everything from that. And this is something that what they've done, they, they, gave, the, they gave this out free for a long time because they realized, hey, people in baseball fans are like, this is amazing. I will totally get it. And we all got hooked on it because we can't stop because it's baseball and you can't end on it. So what has this been financially? Well, <clears throat> if I may turn a page over and show you. There's this general idea that uh, the NFL, I think, I think because of television ratings, which matter, uh, but I think because of television, there's this idea that the NFL is this massive behemoth. Everything else crushes in its path. Baseball is this tiny thing that is only, that, that it's almost even become a niche sport. It's an old man's game. I think this actually ties in per, to part of the problem as everyone keeps talking about the golden age of baseball as if implying that like it's faded and it's not as big as it used to be. Well, if you actually look, compare that, uh, compare the, the number of people that watch, for example, the, uh, comparing that 8,303 figure to uh, that average fans at Wrigley Field. The lowest attended game in the last 10 years, and this is official count, but they had official count at Wrigley Field too, was April 22nd, 2009, between the Tampa Bay Rays, or Devil Rays, I believe they were. No, I think they were the Rays then, and the Toronto Blue Jays, where there were 8,269 fans. That's how many people were physically watching that game in the stands. That, of course, it doesn't even come close to the number of people that are watching it online, the number of people that, that, that have the ability to track it, people that can watch it later. The actual physical number of people watching baseball, that, that, those games at Wrigley Field in, in 1961, physically only 8,562 people saw that game. It, uh, so regardless, like, that's why attendance is almost kind of, like, it mattered a lot more then, but now more people are watching baseball than ever, and it's paid off. That $75 million investment, uh, uh, B uh, Bud Selig, who is... God, who is to thank this guy? Uh, uh, I, I, one of the great. Uh, it's very. It's always difficult to give uh, Bud Selig too much credit for anything because, I mean, he's Bud Selig. I mean, I think I see a mustard stain, and you know, I think he's, he's just fallen over. Like he's considered, I think, generally speaking, and uh, among the popular sports media, as a bit of a boob. But that, and I think he's made some public relations mistakes. But when you really think of how he's grown baseball, baseball is the one sport that has had labor peace for almost 20 years now. A lot of it is because of MLB Advanced Media. If you, uh, because what, what it's done is it's taken this empty investment, this, 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 this slap hit, hitting utility infielder, and turned it into something that, according to Fast Company, which I hear is a good magazine, uh, 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 I'm just kissing up to our host. According to, <laughs> according to Fast Company, uh, MLB uh, Advanced Media, not having nothing to do with baseball. Like not, MLB Advanced Media is actually a separate company. Own, like it's, baseball is the primary investor in it, but it actually has a different valuation. Last year, they, were, they turned down, they've actually turned down offers up to $100 billion in private equity investments. That's not a billion to like buy it. That's a billion to actually just invest. They want it all to themselves. 
And what has happened is that's actually, certainly it's hard to, uh, when they haven't figured out, like there's no, for example, salary cap in baseball. So a lot of times you hear the struggles of why the Yankees get to spend so much and the Rays don't get to spend so little. Really, if you look at the numbers on that, it's really just the Yankees and then to a lesser extent the Red Sox. And everyone else is a gen in a general kind of, they've been able to spread out the money because the money from MLB AM actually goes to all teams equally. So because of that, in 2011, comparing it to the NFL, in 2011, there, uh, it is expected, last year, 6.6 .6 billion in total revenue for baseball and 7.8 billion for the NFL total revenue. That is much closer than I think anyone thinking. That, that gap is, has, has declined every year to the point by like 2014, and let's believe that MLB may in fact pass the NFL in revenue, which again, you don't see that from the TV ratings, and they, and, and, but the, the NFL is much better, I think, uh, at, at making itself look bigger than it actually is bigger. But baseball is catching up. And the idea that you would have something as historic as Roger Maris hitting, a, uh, hitting his 61st home run and 23,000 people in the planet actually saw that as opposed to now where the World Series will be seen across the world by millions and millions and millions of people. The idea that somehow baseball has faded in interest or is less, is less popular, it's not even supported by the facts or by the money. So. Happy baseball, fan first. That's all I got, thanks.